Here are today's top stories. President Duterte meets with U.S. Secretary of State Michael Pompeo to discuss regional security and other bilateral interests. The government launches a newspaper that reports on the administration's achievements while fighting fake news. The Commission on Elections warns about filing charges against certain candidates as Task Force Baclas removes illegal campaign materials. And the Philippine News Agency expands its reach on its 46th anniversary. Today, I'm Pia Rosses Morato. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. President Rodrigo Duterte and U.S. Secretary of State Michael Pompeo held a short yet productive meeting aimed at improving relations between the Philippines and the United States. Gigi Arcilia Agtay has a story. President Rodrigo Duterte and U.S. Department of State Chief Michael Pompeo met on Thursday night at the Villamore Air Base in Pasay City. Pompeo was welcomed at the Villamore Air Base by U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines, Sung Kim, and Senior Official for the U.S. Department of State Bureau of East Asian and Pacific Affairs, Patrick Murphy. State Deputy Spokesperson Robert Paladino says among the topics discussed were cooperation regarding regional security and terrorism. According to the U.S. Embassy, Pompeo's first official visit to the country underscores the U.S. commitment to deepening its economic relationship and security cooperation with the Philippines. Earlier today, Pompeo had a bilateral meeting with Foreign Affairs Secretary Theodora Luxin Jr. Luxin said he and Pompeo had agreed to sustain a continuous exchange of high-level visits between the Philippines and the U.S. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Gigi Arcilia Agtay. Task Force Baclas has started removing illegal campaign materials in different parts of Metro Manila. Some 300 personnel from Comelec, PNP, MMDA, and DPWH were deployed in Malate and San Andres, Bukid, Manila to take down illegal campaign posters. Illegal campaign posters on Edsa Pasay were also removed. Most of the campaign paraphernalia were posted on electrical posts, wires, trees, lampposts, walls of public buildings, and signboards on public properties. Comelec spokesperson James Jimenez says, Task Force Baclas will document the illegal campaign materials which will be used as evidence in filing of charges against the violators. The task force will continue its operations around Metro Manila until after the election day on May 13. NCRPO says common crimes in Metro Manila decreased in the fourth quarter of 2018. The report says total common crimes dropped by 7.5% from the third quarter of 2018. These include eight focus crimes such as murder, homicide, physical injury, rape and robbery, theft and carjacking of motor vehicles and motorcycles. Theft of cars registered the highest drop in the number of cases at 31.48% followed by murder, robbery, and rape. Meanwhile, close to 780,000 individuals have been arrested since June last year in Metro Manila for violating various ordinances. 24% of the arrests involved violators of the smoking ban, followed by minors violating curfew at 6%, being in public while half-naked at 5.3%, and drinking in public places at 4.7%. Nearly 60% of the total arrests were violators of other city and municipal ordinances. The PNP steps in to stop the spread of the Momo challenge in social media, and public school teachers are asked to wait longer for their 100% salary increase. More on these and other news around the metro from Benj Bondoc. 
The PNP anti-cybercrime group is working on blocking the so-called Momo challenge and other suicide games from social media. Anti-cybercrime spokesperson Artemio Cinco Jr. says they are coordinating with the DICT and NTC to stop the spread of the game. PNP advises parents and guardians to strictly monitor children's activities online amid the spread of an alleged suicide game. Meanwhile, public school teachers may have to wait until 2020 before the requested salary increase will be granted. According to Budget Secretary Benjamin Jokno, the last tranche of increase under the salary standardization law is due this year and he is confident that the 2019 proposed national budget would be signed this month. The government is also studying a salary increase for government employees from 2020 to 2022. In other news, Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir bin Mohamad will visit the Philippines to meet with President Rodrigo Duterte on March 6 to 7. The two leaders will hold a bilateral meeting to discuss Philippine-Malaysian cooperation in the political, economic, and people-to-people -people spheres and exchange views on topics of mutual importance. Mahathir is also scheduled to meet with Senate President Tito Soto and House Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. The Philippine News Agency has proven its dedication to its role not only as a government media entity but as an agent of change. We look back at the PNA's beginnings, growth, and expansion as it stands alongside history for 46 years. Bench Bondok has a story. The Philippine News Agency was inaugurated in Malacanang on March 1, 1973 as the official news agency of the government by then Information Minister Francisco Estatad, replacing the privately owned Philippine News Service. During the martial law years, the PNA, together with the so-called Big Four news agencies, Reuters, Agence France Press, Associated Press, and United Press International, brought news around the Philippines to the outside world. In 1974, PNA inaugurated its first domestic bureau in Cebu City, opening a new era for the media in the Queen City of the South. The peak number of domestic bureaus stood at 23 in 1975. Until 1986, the PNA, through the former Office of Media Affairs, headed by then Information Minister Gregorio Sendaña, had overseas bureaus in San Francisco, Sacramento, Los Angeles, New York, Washington, Chicago, Toronto, Sydney, and Jeddah. On January 18 to 22, 1983, PNA hosted the first ASEAN Editors Conference in Manila. The five-day conference was participated in by the 24 members of the Asia-Pacific News Network, a news exchange system which linked news agencies in 24 countries in the region. During the government reorganization in 1987, two new bureaus were created, the present-day News and Information Bureau, or NIB, and the Bureau of Communication Services. PNA remains a division of the NIB under the supervision of Director Virginia Arcilia Agtay. PNA's editorial operations are handled by Acting Executive Editor Luis Morente, assisted by Acting Managing Editor Cynthia Luna, and several senior editors. To date, PNA remains as the official state news agency of the Philippines, listed in the membership of the Organization of Asia-Pacific News Agencies. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. Still to come, the government launches a newspaper that reports on the administration's achievements while fighting fake news. The Department of Agriculture gets 5 billion pesos in funds to help cushion the impact of rice tarification on farmers. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. We are now uh, bringing this to the EU to seek your cooperation to stop the funding of these mm -hmm. organizations so that your money will not be used to kill our people because mm -hmm. technically the funds are used by these terrorist organizations to harass our people, to sabotage government. These terrorist organizations for the last 50 years have 
committed mass murder. They have killed the leaders of indigenous people who refuse to cooperate with them. It's being taken advantage of in a way by the communists, terrorist communists, because they pretend they join in in you know, the political opposition, legitimate political opposition against the democratically elected government, but actually they have a deeper intention. It's not just about the president. They want to destroy the state. They want... We're here now in the EU to discuss with the members of the parliament how they can at least delay the release of these funds. As far as the EU is concerned, meron na silang release na 621 thousand euros na ngayon eh, in audit na nila ngayon because of our report but they're they're in the process of releasing 1.3 million euros more for uh, similar projects in the Philippines so ang epekto nito hindi natin alam but ang sigurado natin na, na epekto nito ay continuous yung kanilang pagtitrain uh, ng mga kabataan para maging uh, rebelde para maging radical at maging kalaban ng gobyerno so that's not good I promised I would look into, into this very seriously and, and, and talk to the colleagues in the European Commission or delegation on the ground. We have new, a new counter-terrorism attaché uh, located in Indonesia, but with a, a regional uh, uh, remit. And so we'll, we'll, we'll look at this very seriously. Our paglaban sa terrorismo ang shared goal ng Pilipinas at ng European Union. Kaya it's important na iparating ng Philippine delegation sa EU na may bahagi ng pondo nito na pupunta sa mga organisasyon o front ng Communist Terrorism Group. The Duterte administration has launched Balita Central, a newspaper dedicated to fighting disinformation and fake news by disseminating updates on government projects and programs. The Bureau of Communication Services led the soft launching of the paper on Thursday. Balita Central will communicate with the public the government's efforts to provide better lives to Filipinos as well as address current social issues in the country. In line with the paper's launching, PCOO Undersecretary George Apasible urged the public to help combat the spread of fake news by verifying stories before taking it as truth. The 12-page newspaper will be distributed in select LRT and MRT stations. The Chinese embassy clarifies it will not adopt a tit-for-tat approach should the Philippine government deport Chinese illegal workers. In a statement from the Chinese embassy, it says the Chinese embassy in the Philippines did not say that Beijing would adopt a tit-for-tat approach should the Philippine government deport Chinese nationals found working illegally in the country. This statement comes after presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said Chinese Ambassador Chao Jinhua told him over dinner that if the Philippines will just deport Chinese not in accordance with the law, then they will also do the same. The embassy underscored that China respects the laws and regulations of the Philippines and would not tolerate Chinese nationals working illegally in foreign countries. The government has released 5 billion pesos to cushion the possible effects of rice import liberalization in line with the rice tarification law. Here's our report. The Department of Agriculture gets 5 billion peso funding for the National Rice Program. The fund is complementary to the law's 10 billion peso rice competitiveness enhancement fund or RCEF. This will be used to provide farmers tools and equipment, assistance in the production, promotion and distribution of certified rice seeds, upgrading of post-harvest storage facilities, credit assistance, irrigation support, and R&D support. The rice certification law signed and approved by President Duterte is expected to lower retail prices of rice, help lower inflation, and improve farmers' incomes, productivity, and competitiveness. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Joyce Goodies. With the incoming El Nino phenomenon, General Santos City has set some interventions to ease the impact of the drought on crops. 
The city government is currently distributing vegetable seeds among local farmers to augment their food supplies and will also provide assistance to affected farmers once the regular planting season resumes in May. At least 99 hectares of farmlands are currently planted with various crops, mostly corn, which are at risk of wilting due to the intense dry weather. Pagasa says the drought will intensify during the first quarter of the year and would last until April. A parish priest in Cadiz City is accused of raping a four-year-old girl. Meanwhile, the DNR works on improving water quality in El Nido, Palawan. More on this and other stories from the provinces from Janice Cave. In Negros Occidental, a parish priest is facing a rape complaint after he was accused of molesting a four-year-old girl in Cadiz City. Reports says the incident happened on February 8 inside the comfort room of the convent. The priest allegedly kissed the minor and played with her private part. Bishop Gerardo Alminaza of the Diocese of San Carlos said they are greatly saddened and shocked that a young child is alleged to have been molested by one of their clergies. In El Nido, Palawan, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources is pushing through with the cleanup of Bakwit Bay. About 200 commercial establishments, businesses, and local and national government agencies have expressed cooperation to protect Bakwit Bay. In Davao City, Water District assured that it has enough water supply this summer in anticipation of El Nino. Over 200,000 people are drawing water from the DCWD, which consumes about 320 million liters of water daily. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Up next, President Duterte vetoes a bill prohibiting corporal punishment on children. The Philippine News Agency extends its reach nationwide and globally on its 46th anniversary. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Malaki ang tulong ng ating New City Validators dahil sila ang daan upang matukoy ang ating mga kababayang nangangailangan ng higit na tulong na may malasapit sa Giamana. Uraan mo nga narigat kan Adayo, Bisil, Banog, kan Lingat nga mapuspus iti bagi, iti kalaban, haan ko nga inpaidam, iti serbisyo, ayat ko lang nga makatulong, iti kapadak nga marigrigat. At namnamaok nga agtultuloy, iti tulong pa nagtulong nyo, iti babasit kan marigrigat nga kakapadak. Salamat, just the agnina. WD, 
President Rodrigo Duterte refused to sign the so-called Antipalo Bill, which promotes non-violent discipline for children. Former Special Assistant to the President Bongo says, President Duterte knows that corporal punishment is outdated as a discipline method in Western countries. However, the President believed a more balanced treatment is needed where children's rights are protected while parents assert their authority. Gaw mentioned the Family Code of the Philippines, the Anti-Child Abuse Act of 1992, the Child and Youth Welfare Code, and the Anti-Violence Against Women and Their Children Act of 2004. He says these are enough to protect children from maltreatment. In our foreign news, China's largest offshore oil and gas producer announced that it discovered a 100 billion cubic meter natural gas reserve in the Bohai Sea off North China. China National Offshore Oil Corporation said the reserve could sustain a city with a million residents for more than 100 years. Project manager Liu Baosheng said that 11 wells have found oil and gas in the Bohai Sea and a 12th well has reached 4,700 meters below the seabed. Most domestic natural gas bases are located in western China, while 70% of the natural resource is used in the central and eastern part of the country. In sports, the Philippine Basketball Association has admitted that one of the designated referees for the Phoenix Northport game made a wrong call when he slapped Sean Anthony with an offensive foul. Referee Noy Guevara called an offensive foul against Anthony after the latter appeared to have hit Justin Chua on the head while taking a three-point shot that actually went in. The game was tied 96 all with 47.8 seconds to go. When the supposed foul happened, Phoenix won 98-96. However, in the review of the play, the PBA technical group confirmed that no foul was committed. The PBA apologized for the incident, adding that Guevara shall be met the appropriate sanction as it assured fans of its impartiality and fairness. Iloilo City is promoting the famous Dinagyang Festival with performance tours here and abroad. The tour aims to draw more tourists to visit the city and let them experience the Dinagyang Festival firsthand. More on this from Joyce Kudis. The Iloilo City's Dinagyang Festival has started its first Philippine tour with a performance at the Yokohama plant in Clark, Pampanga on Wednesday. The delegation performed at several shopping malls in Angeles, San Fernando, and Baguio City. They will also be joining the Panagbenga Festival Grand Street Parade on Saturday, March 2. The Iloilo Dinagyang Foundation head Michael Nang said it's about time to hold a Philippine tour so Filipinos will be educated of their meaningful festival. Nang said this is part of the foundation's corporate social responsibility to promote Iloilo City to tourists and investors. The festival has also been able to perform in South Korea, New Zealand, Guam, United States of America, Singapore, and Japan, among others. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Joyce Goodies. As the Philippine News Agency moves forward on its 46th anniversary, the agency is reaching new heights by reaching out to fellow agencies here and abroad. Recent partnerships and upgrades in equipment will ensure that the PNA will better serve the public. Janice Cave has the story. There's no stopping the Philippine News Agency from expanding its reach both here and abroad. PNA recently signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Emirates News Agency or WAM on the sidelines of the 2019 World Government Summit in Dubai, UAE on February 11 this year. Under the MOU, PNA and WAM will exchange visits of their personnel and experience in journalism, video editing and production, social media, publishing and translation. In the past three years, PNA has also signed agreements with China Radio International, Yonhap News Agency of South Korea, and Hungarian News Agency. PNA staff and reporters have and continue to receive journalism training sessions from both Russia and China. On February 15, the Chinese Embassy in Manila donated sets of equipment to PNA and Raja Pilipinas of the Philippine Broadcasting Service. PCOO Secretary Martin Antanar says, All these developments are part of efforts to strengthen PNA's presence in social media and reach a wider audience. Antanar expressed hope that PNA would remain steadfast 
in efforts to bring about genuine and meaningful change in society. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Let's take another look at today's top stories. President Duterte meets with U.S. Secretary of State Michael Pompeo to discuss regional security and other bilateral interests. The government launches a newspaper that reports on the administration's achievements while fighting fake news. The Commission on Elections warns about filing charges against certain candidates as Task Force Baclas removes illegal campaign materials. And the Philippine News Agency expands its reach on its 46th anniversary. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and website. On behalf of the Philippine News Agency on its 46th anniversary, the PNA Newsroom vows to continue giving you your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. I'm Pia Rosas Morato. Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary!